Okay, time to get started on uh, this voltmeter. Now this is the uh, rather large voltmeter that I believe the first one to use was um, Rob of uh, Southern Brisbane Nerf Club. Put it on his uh, Trudgeon when he remodeled it. Walcom S7 also used the same thing on the Paradigm Shift and recently I've seen Tiger Foam use it on his Demolisher uh, Centurion integration. But it's the uh, kind of green LCD display that's got the little battery indices and a percentage and then it's got multiple settings that are triggered by this little button on the back. So, I guess, now the, the big big fancy part of this mounts on the back and it's just the lens itself that is uh, exposed. So we need to kind of get an idea of where we want to lay this thing out. Now I'm kind of thinking having it in uh, kind of midway in the display here. In fact, uh, let's see if I can find the display. Drop it in there. Now the question is to, you know, do I center it up with the box or do I center it up with the display itself? Because there's the buttons across the bottom. So I just have to kind of hold this here and imagine that I'm shooting things and oh no, I need to see what all these things that light up. Do I want to mount it up higher? Or do I want it kind of lower? And the higher actually looks better, like having it kind of in line with the, uh, huh, kind of having it in line with the display itself instead of having it down lower. Uh, one thought being that the the button on the back that toggles through the, I think, three different settings, display settings, it'd be cool to be able to have access to that. Um, when these first kind of showed up on the scene, <clears throat> that I had thought about, you know, seeing if you could, you know, solder into the, the button here and add a remote switch, but that is some tiny, tiny solder, and I'm not so hot at soldering. So, uh, that makes me think maybe I'd be better off mounting this, because if I mounted it like, like here, for example, like right about there, that puts a button within the jam door, so if we, uh, where's the jam door? Jam door, jam door, jam door. Oh, oh for Pete's sake. There we are. So one thing we want to look at is to make sure that we don't have to worry about uh, any wiring or any, uh, anything getting in the way. So, if we imagine this thing is mounted in here, then uh, yeah, it looks like we'll have to, we'd have to do some trimming to the strife portion here, which I don't believe there's anything important right here. Um, we just basically glued the strife to a bit of the um, ridge, you know, the extension of this guy up here just for stability and stuff, which we could change if we needed to open this area up and then just reinforce it down lower. Cause I don't believe there's any actual, they, this basically just covers up the pusher mechanism and it's the side of the blaster. So there's really no functional uh, properties here. So the thought being, if we mounted it like, just kind of get an idea here, about there, which would be about there. That'll put it slightly into the mag well, but if we move it back to where the, um, just the mounting surface would be over into the mag well, that shouldn't hurt anybody's feelings. And that's, let's see, I'll put it like, right there. I don't think that's outlandish. I'm just kind of eyeballing things and using my imagination. Um, in fact, forward a little more would be cool. And if it's up right there, it's not really in the magwell. It's just kind of in the area of. But the way, uh, like, too many components laying around. If we put this guy in here and move him back in the rearmost um, setting, that opens up this whole area. So if we had this guy mounted, say, 
in this area, you'd be able to open the jam door and access this little button, which is super cool actually. And the leads on here should be plenty long enough to be routed out of the way and tap into the main power source, so that's excellent to know as well. So, I actually kind of like how this is looking. Let's see, it's going to stand off about that far. Let me put it right in there. So yeah, I don't think... Um, you know, just kind of eyeballing stuff. I think there's enough spacing off between the shells here, between like the, the this, the, I guess the outside of the magwell area and the inside of the shell there. Um, just kind of, uh, just kind of looking down the top, looking at, uh, trying to look between the shells at the um, ribs and the supports that we glued to. Um, I think if we can open up this area of the strife a ways and fit this guy in there, um, I had kind of planned on, I'm not sure how other people have mounted theirs, but there's these two little, this little flange deal here that you run a screw in and a nut on. Um, I'd imagine just using, and as much as I'd like a really smooth look on the outside, I want it to be serviceable, so I don't really want to like glue this in necessarily, so I think I will use some kind of discrete fasteners. Um, so there will be a nut on the back, which will be kind of tricky to get to, but it's one of those things hopefully you don't have to get to it very often. So, I think it's pretty fair game to start cutting on, or at least start laying out and marking the area to cut for this guy. Because so I think there's, there's, we shouldn't have any problems here. The only thing that's going to be here is the lights back here that we talked about for the uh, magwell indicator in the priming indicator things. So, and that's going to be back here. That'll be part of a separate circuit. So, no, I take that back. We will have switches mounted. Um, I'm considering, let's see if I can dig them out. We wanted to put the voltmeter on a switch so it can be, you know, switched off and the little Magwell uh, gimmick detail, um, indicator gimmick, wanted to be able to turn it off just for the heck of it. So I got a handful of these tiny, tiny little little switches. Can you focus? There you go. And it's just this little, this little black guy and he just goes click on, click off. Um, so there'll be two of those and I'd considered them putting them in here. Boom, boom. That way, it's they're you know easily accessible, relatively, um, but still kind of you know relatively clean and out of the way. So that would involve opening up this area here, which I don't think is important either. It's just basically the opposite side of the. Um, yeah, it's just basically the opposite side of the switch here, which actually works out good because we'd be able to come out of the switch, the actual indicator switch into the main switch, right? Is that how that works? I guess as long as it cuts the power either way uh, is all that's really important. So I think we could be able to... Yeah, because the there, there shouldn't be anything important on the other side of this since all it's doing is that. So we should be able to remove this area in here in order to get access back into this area for the switches, which I think the switches... I think I'll mount them on a, on a, a piece of something. Haven't decided yet and secure them that way. That way the whole unit can kind of slide in and lock into the holes. That way it's just taking the individual buttons and sticking them back there. If you push on the button too hard and it pops out, you know, pops in, that'd be kind of a bummer. So, um, I think we can start to get a bit reckless and crazy and start removing some material on this side. Um, I think in here to make room for the, uh, the Voltmeter. In fact, I think... Where the heck did it go? Golly. Okay. Um, I think we can basically select where we want it here, and we'll mark it out, and I think we'll cut the basic hole for the display, and then we will open up the area behind as we need. So fortunately, this comes with a nice little protective uh, film on top, so we should be able to knock this around a little bit uh, without too much heartache. So, I think, keeping in mind we want this little access button, boop, boop, that's easy to get to. So we want it kind of on the, uh, so where's our jam door? You guys opened up like that. 
and we want him to be roughly in this area. As long as he is that side of that guy. Just kind of looking things over. If he's in this neighborhood, we should be okay, because you can reach a finger in there and go boop and hit that guy, because yeah, because we can even we can even knock out the top of this little ledge here if we need to, and just build a, a cover panel of some kind, uh, so we can still have access. Because I think, if I remember right, I've never actually used this. Um, can't remember if it was Walcom said it or who, but that there's I think three settings, and the first setting I think is the percentage, and the second setting is the voltmeter itself. So if you want the voltmeter, you plug it in, and then you have to hit the button. So you would do want it to be relatively easy to access. So I think we can start plotting this out. And I'm not quite sure right off the bat how, how we're gonna do that. Um, I think that will look nice though. I'm really happy with that. If we can take a piece of something the same size as the lens here, like a piece of tape, if we can put a piece of tape on the lens here and then trim the tape itself off, we could stick the tape right there where we want it and be able to cut through the tape basically and you know we will want to cut um, a little small and then work our way out I think but uh, otherwise we're doing measuring and stuff and we know how that works with me. So fortunately though we have a lot of lines, a lot of these nice parallel lines everywhere to work with, and since we're dealing with something that is very much a square, or rectangle if you will, um, we should be able to be able to measure off some of these references to make sure that our display is level, because the last thing we want is to have the display cockeyed a little bit, um, especially on something that's just a lot of a lot of parallel horizontal lines. If this is kind of crooked a little bit, it's going to look really, really weird. So. Uh, where's my little measuring thing? Would have been cool if they made this like a really even size somewhere where it's like, oh, it's exactly this. No, it's some weird, goofy measurement. Thanks a lot for your Chinese display company. Okay. So, honestly, favoring the tape idea. Easy. Favoring the tape idea right now. Um, that's just going to be like... Yep. Okay, well, we're going to peel that off. Boy, that's beautiful. Okay, so we're gonna set that aside carefully and we'll get, try to reattach it later just for protection. I think we will take this guy. This is where I kind of come in and preface this with the, the whole, this isn't like the way to do it, this is just the way I am doing it. I have no idea if this is the right way to do it or not because I've never done it before. So this is us learning together. Which is another important reason I know it's called the model along because you're kind of working along with me, but I hope nobody's like actually watching the episode and working at the same time because there's been several occasions now where it's like, oh, hey, guess what? I screwed up. Hope you didn't do that. So, yeah, w wait and see how the show ends. And then if you want to, maybe run out and try to duplicate it. But the important thing that I'm trying to cover, of course, is the uh, processes, more of the the thinking and some of the methods and stuff like that. Not, I'm, I'll be the first one to come out and say, I'm. The way I do things may not always be the right way to do it. Sometimes things happen, and it's like, you know what? This is as good as it's going to get today. <laughs> so, uh, you just have to decide if that is what you want for your project. Okay, now my little protective film thing is all covered with weird fuzzes and crap, so please don't destroy the actual display. Okay, so we got a piece of tape that's the same size and shape as the display itself. So this is where we say, okay, this is, there we go. 
we wanted it like in this area. So we know we want it. Uh, do we want to do some math stuff? I don't know. We'll just eyeball it. We will aim from... Zoom in a little bit. Boy, the focus is getting all weird. Come on, focus, wake up. We'll measure from... Get out of here. From the top of the, from this line here, and we'll measure down. We'll even do it in millimeters since people do millimeter stuff. Um, to basically the line in the middle of the display to get an idea of where the center is of the display, if that's what we're going for. So we'll kind of go like, whoop. and we'll say it's like 10, like 16, 17 millimeters. Okay, so that means we want to take this guy. Put the middle of him on that same. That's on 15. That's actually pretty close. We're just dropping it down. Well, that's pretty good. To roughly 10 millimeters from the line to the top of our new display, which I think is okay. So that puts that there. Um, just kind of looking and seeing how the uh, now that we have a simulated display, looking at it and being like, pew pew, can see the counter. There's the thing. Do we want to move forward a little bit? I think that's good. That um, that should leave plenty of room to get in there and push that button. So I think basically we can come through, and I'm just going to use my blade and just kind of trace lightly, very lightly. Just enough to kind of etch the surface just a bit. Now we have this dandy little square, which isn't a perfect square, but it ought to at least get us close. So, boy. Which is kind of cool because it's going to lap over a joint here, so we will have a hole and probably going to do a little reinforcing behind, I think. Uh, we'll wait and see if, just depending on what, what's actually on the back, that'll give us a chance to create kind of a lap joint and a little more reinforcement on that, on this seam. So that's kind of a bonus. And I guess, without further ado, I uh, guess we can start cutting. That's kind of fun. a little... And like I said before, we're going to be all wild and reckless and we're just going to chew into this thing. So no pilot holes, we're just going to go blah and just chew into it. Want to watch me be wrong or make a mistake? Hang on. Okay, did a little uh, test fitting just to see 
know how close we were but I couldn't get the display all the way in so I had to remove a little more material off the back not too far off I'll just keep hitting it with a little file and see how where that leads us Right, just like that. Not perfect, perfect, perfect. There's a tiny bit of a gap here, but well, I think that I don't think it'll show. I'm pretty, uh, pretty pleased with that. And let's look at it with the counter display dropped in. There. Now looking down the blaster, you'll see the be able to see the counter and the voltmeter and everything all at once. So that's very nice. I'm very happy with that. Uh, next we'll just need to get a hold of some very small and classy looking um, screws, some little bolts or something to, for securing it. And then we'll be able to hold it up behind, mark the holes, drill it, and be pretty much done with that aspect of things. Then just get ready to wire it up once we get the rest of the harness all in there. So I think we can call this for the time being. Voltmeter is basically done, ready to go.